We got a homemade tractor here that I built a few years back and I recently retrofitted it with another engine from a buddy of mine. It's a Rover 1S60 turbine. It's an experimental engine. But he had it and he said, can you put it on this tractor? Yeah, I can do that. So let's start with the tractor, what I, what I did to build it. Basically, as you can see, it's a channel iron frame. The uh, hydraulic oil tank and the fuel tank, which is on the other side, are both made out of square tubing. It's 3 8 thick wall. It's very heavy. Used it for weight. The rear axle in here is a Dana 44, and it's a, I got it out of a concrete buggy, and it has an offset carrier and an offset pig, so I didn't have to cut anything down. And the transmission is a three-speed transmission. It's a Ford three-speed out of a pickup truck or a Mustang or something from back in the 60s or 70s. And the drive unit that drives the transmission has a Vickers piston pump, okay, which drives through a chain case, the input shaft to the transmission, and then which drives the pump is a Sunstrand 15 series hydrostatic pump. And that drives off of a PTO shaft here in the back of the engine. I can open up the hood here. So what we can gain from the engine here, it has a reduction gear on it. It cuts down the speed of the engine from about 46,000 down to uh, 3,600 RPM. So that's belt drive from there down to the hydrostatic pump. And then of course it has a power takeoff drive system. It's operated through a belt tensioner here. There's a gear case underneath the engine that reduces the speed down even more. So we have effectively about a 650 RPM PTO at the rear of the tractor. So it's an agricultural type system. And then, batteries underneath the seat here, real simple. It has a hydraulic cylinder mounted on the side over here, which operates the lift system. Uh, standard category one three point hitch with uh, the hitch have on the arms here has the quick disconnect which I designed myself and built and this has power down also but it also has a float position too so if you're going over uneven ground if you're using a greater blade or something you can just hit the float and it'll follow the ground the steering on the tractor is an orbital steering all it has is a hydraulic supply pressure from a auxiliary pump it has an orbital steering valve right there Okay, and it just operates a steering cylinder that's mounted on the front axle. The front axle pivots in the tractor for allowing it to walk over on even ground. That's a homemade front axle. I just took angle iron, welded it together to make square tubing out of it. Built the steering knuckles. and has boat trailer hubs on it. And it's just a steering cylinder I had laying around. So it's all pretty simple. Put a little bumper on the front here so it kind of protects the front of the engine. But uh, basically that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, we got to remember. General Motors alternator with the built-in regulator. Simplest thing you can get, one wire installation. They always charge. So that's, that's pretty much it on the, how we built this thing. It has an electric fuel pump to supply the, the engine. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. We're gonna start this thing. We got a fuel pump here, we turn that switch on. Then we have an ignition switch here, we turn that on. That's, that just operates a high voltage coil. This is a fuel control. It's basically a, a throttle somewhat, but it's on and off on the fuel. And that controls? That controls the uh, fuel valve on the back of the combustion chamber. And like we said before, this is an experimental engine. Uh, it's really touchy on the fuel valve, so you got to kind of feather it to get it to take off. There's a stop and a start button here. And hit the start button.
Well, we burned about a gallon of fuel, made a mess out in the garden, so now we can plant some beans if it don't rain.